remember the hairs going up on the back of my neck. It was something that I had never seen before. They come out of the water when you least expect them. I just saw three humps come up. It was startling how big it was. Sightings of strange underwater monsters are being reported all over the world. I saw a torso the size of a pony. There's something out there that people are seeing. Unknown aquatic species, a remnant from the dinosaurs, or just a myth. They can be hoaxes, simple mistakes. They can be all sorts of things. Loch Ness is enormous. It's a fantastic body of water. Since the 6th century, there have been reports that a monster lurks in the loch. And a good part of the evidence for the existence of a creature in this water is witness testimony. Miko Takala thinks he spotted the beast while walking the Loch Ness shoreline in 2003. I was near the water's edge, saw the creature. It was a kind of very dark brownish color, a sort of scaly color, much like a sort of snake-like texture. It wasn't just sitting there, it, it was actually swimming against the current. And I remember the hairs going up on the back of my neck because it was so vividly something that I had never seen before. Takala isn't the only one who insists he's laid eyes on the creature here. I remember that day, that it was a very sunny day. They were really still. In 2010, Richard Preston was hired to redesign the landscape of a castle that sits on Loch Ness. The first things we were doing that day is checking out around the castle to see what, what jobs needed doing. And I went for a quick visual inspection around the terrace of the castle. The terrace looks over the loch. I saw something out of the corner of my eye glinting. You see things all the time, but you dismiss them because they're just normal. And this was something different. And I proceeded to go from the terrace down to the lock for a closer view. I was shocked. It was shining as if it was wet. So it had three humps and it was just shimmering in the sunlight. And it looked 3D. It just stood out like nothing else I've ever seen before. Not really understanding what it was that I was seeing. The story of the Loch Ness Monster isn't just a strange Scottish legend. Similar tales in faraway seas make this a global phenomenon. People insist they've seen cryptic creatures making unexpected appearances in photos and video. Oh, look at this! Oh, oh, this and rising from the waters. Some of these reported sightings come from the northeastern United States at Lake Champlain. Growing up here, Bill Villadou thought he knew Lake Champlain inside out, until he saw something strange. Well, it was a summer day, and the lake was glass smooth. And we decided it was so nice that we would travel down the uh, west side of the lake. 
My brother-in-law saw the animal first. He shut the boat down. And we came up alongside of it uh, to a distance of about five feet. I saw a torso, which was approximately the size of a pony. And I could see, a, a, not a hump, but a back ridge that was a dark color. The texture was very clear. It, it, it had no scales, did not have fur. It was like eel skin. There was no splash, no fuss. It just simply kind of went down like a submarine would dive. Then the experience was over. There's another place in North America where the legend of a sea monster has also taken hold. The inlets of Vancouver Island, Canada, sit at a similar latitude as Lake Champlain. But unlike Lake Champlain, there's a wide open path here to the vast ocean. In the late 1990s, Robert Iverson stepped out of his house on Vancouver Island. Well, I was sitting in the chair there, look, just looking out into the water. And I saw this three humps come up. Didn't see a head, didn't see a tail, just saw these humps. And it was the size and the speed that really made me sit up and take notice. And I just leaped up out of the chair to sort of try and get a better look at it, but then it was gone. And then I'm looking and looking and looking, and then I see it again. And that's when I was convinced I had actually seen something. It was big. After it disappeared the second time, I, well, I just sat down there and just kept looking. It was startling how big it was. Because, you know, sitting there, you see seals go by all the time and whales. And this was bigger than any of those things. You see strange things out in the water, but nothing like that. Whatever I'm looking out there, I'm looking for. I have never seen anything like it since or before. But back at Loch Ness in Scotland, Richard Preston has more than just his word for what he saw. I took pictures on my phone because I couldn't believe what I was seeing, really. I looked to see if any colleagues were around so they could look at what I saw, and uh, nobody about. And I turned back round to the lock. There was nothing. Not a wave, a wake, or anything, just still. And it just disappeared. Researcher Miko Takala believes Preston might have captured a rare picture of the elusive creature. This is a promising sighting. The interesting thing about these photos is it looks fairly large. I would have, have to estimate it at 15 to 25 meters long. You have three or four humps in the water. It's one of the most fascinating pictures of the Loch Ness Monster that I've ever seen. But skeptics explain sightings and photos like these as hoaxes, mirages, or misidentifications. Water is mysterious. It can be a mirror, too. A mirror to our own imagination. Adrian Shine has been investigating Loch Ness since the 1970s and hasn't seen pictures or anything else that he thinks proves the beast exists. Photographs can be of known animals, misinterpreted. They can be hoaxes. 
simple mistakes. They can be all sorts of things. Shine has analyzed dozens of pictures like Richard Preston's. In the case of uh, Richard's photo, you've got an honest man taking a picture in good light conditions of something that we're quite definitely convinced was there. So then you have the photo. What is in the photo? By looking at the shadows, you can see where the sun was. We've concluded that the Richard Preston pictures are reflections of the sun on the water caused by house windows and therefore do not represent evidence for the Loch Ness Monster. Shine says a trick of light, not doctoring, created an illusion in these photos. Over the years, some people have tried to fake pictures of the legendary monster. The camera lies much more often than the witnesses. The classic pictures have got nothing to do with Loch Ness Monsters. The most famous photo of the Loch Ness Monster is known as the Surgeon's Photo. And it is the one image out of all the images which is probably in the backs of the minds of almost all the inhabitants of the Western world when they think of the Loch Ness Monster. But 60 years later, there was a surprising twist, an admission of an elaborate hoax. The hoaxer claimed the famous picture is really a model of the monster attached to a toy submarine. Back on Vancouver Island, former oceanography professor Dr. Paul LeBlonde and illustrator Jason Walton are poring over witness reports of sea creatures. This 2009 video shot off the coast of Alaska has them buzzing. This is taken by Kelly Nash from his fishing boat. There's a sandbar at the, uh, just at the back there. And the fishing boat's over here. The head occasionally comes up. At one point, there's a jet of water that comes up in the air. It blows. Pretty amazing. This is the only example that we have, I think, of one of these animals blowing from the back of its head, apparently. Right. The blurry video makes it hard to tell exactly what this is. Walton has also created sketches based on descriptions from witnesses who report seeing a sea monster. There's the head, there's the tail, it has serrations at the top there. The witness descriptions have been so regular and they match each other so well, I really do think that there's a large mystery in our oceans. Eyewitness testimony in a court of law would hold a great deal of weight, but science is not the law. People's impressions of what they see might be influenced by their expectations, by one's memory, by one's desire to make a story that you can rationalize. No one knows for sure how many claims of sea monster sightings there have been. But in Lake Champlain alone, more than 300 eyewitnesses have reported seeing an unexplainable creature roaming the waters. Many people see a strange animal which is either a whale nor a familiar other marine animal. It uh, typically has a long neck, a horse-like head. It's 20 to 40 feet long. Over the past 16 years, biologist Dr. Ellen Marsden of the University of Vermont has documented over 70 species of native fish living in Lake Champlain, but has found nothing large or serpentine. There's nothing in existence today that has that sort of configuration. There have been many attempts to prove the existence of the monster of Lake Champlain and searching can be a challenge. Lake Champlain's big. Underneath the surface, it's not only a huge three-dimensional area to look, 
but the visibility is bad, so you've got a fairly limited sphere of vision. And Marsden says for a creature to survive here over time, there would be signs that it's breeding. This is one of the biggest arguments against there being a lake monster. You can't have just one. You've got to have something like 50 for a stable population. 500 to 5,000 are more comfortable populations who would be sure that it will continue over time. You'd think you'd see them a little bit more often. The lack of physical evidence does not deter those dedicated to tracking sea creatures that many consider fictional. And that includes searching along Canada's Pacific coast. This collection of inlets, bays and seas is beyond vast. I guess as human beings, we sort of look at the ocean, all we see is the surface, and you kind of forget that it, it goes down a few feet, in some cases several thousand or probably more. And there's so much we just don't understand about the oceans. The waters of the Pacific Northwest uh, range from Alaska in the north all the way down from British Columbia and uh, further south. Dr. Chris Barnes heads a project that studies the bodies of water off the coast of Western Canada. They have a deep continental slope that uh, goes down to about 2,500 meters onto the abyssal plain, the abyss, as it were. So it's a very complex system from the oceanographic viewpoint. Lots of creatures use that series of waterways to travel back and forth from the Pacific. There are large whales and sea lions, wolf eels and giant octopus. And perhaps, some believe, even a sea monster. Some say evidence of sea creature sightings goes back thousands of years. As you drive around the Scottish Highlands, you will sometimes see rather mysterious stones quite big ones, and they're carved. And they were left by the Picts, which are mysterious to us because they didn't have a written tradition. But they did carve these stones, and it's been suggested that one particular image, which is sometimes characterized as the Pictish elephant, might be the Loch Ness Monster. LeBlond and Walton hope to prove that the waters off Vancouver Island are home to this legendary sea creature. So they're setting out to try to find evidence. So uh, me and Paul are going to head out in the boat and we'll go down to Saanich Inlet. There's been a lot of sightings in there over the last few years. Good morning, sir. Good to see you again. Eh? Boat captain Brian Smiley will lead their expedition to try to find the sea monster. The boat is uh, specially designed for wildlife viewings. Joining the search for the elusive creature are diver Matt Smiley and biologist and skeptic Paula Romagosa, who will pilot an underwater ROV or remotely operated vehicle with cameras. This is what we'll be using today. Excellent, excellent. So oh. we'll be able to explore the bottom of the ocean. What a boat you got here, Brian. <laughs> that is totally unique, isn't it? Yeah, it'll definitely give us a very stable platform to be able to work from today and allow us access into some of these little coves and bays that uh, deeper draft vessels definitely can't get into. As the boat heads out, Roma Gosa preps the ROV for its underwater mission. So it has two well, cameras. Camera this one here is a color camera. Yeah. The one down here is a black and white. So if we're deep in the water uh, where there's very little light, it's better to use the black and white yes. camera. LeBlond is eager to put the camera in the water. But even he has no idea what they'll find out there. As LeBlanc makes final preparations for his expedition in Canada's Saanich Inlet, a group of researchers are in the northeastern United States, planning their own sea creature hunt in Lake Champlain. But they are using a different technique. They believe that what you can't see, you might be able to hear. By listening to acoustics, you can find out characteristics that allow you to identify species, especially if they are hard to find. 
Chris Bocast is a skeptic and audio expert who studies marine animal sounds. I'm teaming up with a local researcher who has a good vessel with side sonar and an ROV. So we'll be able to do some fairly sophisticated documentation of what's going on underwater. Let's get this equipment out and get them. So what I have done is kind of made a hobby with equipment that I use. So now I can go anywhere in Lake Champlain to see what's on the bottom. ROV operator Barney Bristow doesn't know what's out there, but he's eager to find out. I myself have never had that type of a sighting, but I do firmly believe uh, with the number of sightings and the history that goes along with it, there is something out there. As Bristow and Bocas make their way across Lake Champlain, hoping to track the creature by the sound it makes. Back in Scotland, Miko Takala is trying to capture a picture of the legendary Loch Ness Monster. But the vast and mysterious nature of the search All this water is very dark, and that's due to the peat stain from the bogs. So you don't see very far underwater. It's an inhospitable, difficult environment to research. It is not beyond the bounds of possibility that there are resident creatures in Loch Ness of a large size and unknown. But there are some difficulties. Food resources are one. Loch Ness is unproductive in a biological sense to sustain a viable breeding population of very large predators. That's a problem. Undeterred, Takala relies on a set of high-tech cameras to monitor the surface of the loch. This is what I'm going to be putting up. It's a very, very powerful zoom lens and it's fixed focus whatever there is in the loch. You'll see it very, very clearly. I'm just going to attach this camera to the bracket so that we can put the pole up. Is this the original camera that you were using? That is, yes, but it's been upgraded and it's got a new zoom lens. Yeah, what we're trying to get is to see what view we can get over a castle. If you can hold it there, yeah, yeah. that's great. Takala and his assistant run a test to make sure they've got a clear shot of the lock. What we know now is we're getting the image that we want, the location's good, and now it's all about making it permanent. It's a numbers game because we are zooming on tightly on a very small area, but an area that the monster is seen the most often. Anybody around the world can log onto our web page and actually see the action live on the cameras. By using the internet, someone somewhere is always looking at the image. And then we just hope that we hit the jackpot with the monster being seen again in that particular location. Takala plays the waiting game, hoping this creature of legends will make an appearance while his camera is rolling on Loch Ness. Back in Canada, LeBlond and his team chart a location where people claim to have spotted a sea creature. All right, here we are in Santa Chinlet. So we're starting over here and we want to get to Deep Cove. We want to deploy the ROV in there yep. and have a look at the area. And, and Paula, you can deploy the ROV in there, right? And, uh, yes. Uh, is there any current in that area that I need to be worried about? We will probably have a little bit of current off on the edges of it, but right in the bay Right itself, in the bay, we're okay. fine. So we all know what to do. We're on our way. The blonde eagerly watches and waits, while Paula gets the ROV ready for action. It's recording. 
While Leblon's team continue searching for any glimpse of a creature that many believe only exists in legend, on Lake Champlain, Chris Bocast has his gear set up to begin listening for signs of a creature here. We'll get the hydrophones ready to go, and we'll drop them when we get to the area that you think is uh, most likely. If there is an animal that makes sounds on any kind of a regular basis, we should be able to capture that. What they're hoping to capture is echolocation. It's a sound animals make when they send high-pitched signals through the water. Echolocation is an extremely sophisticated adaptation and evolvement of the sonic mechanism in marine mammals. To really be able to analyze these very low infrasonic sounds below our range of hearing, you need special recorders. So we're going to be recording at a sample rate of 96 kilohertz. This is an active hydrophone. It's extremely sensitive. We'll put it over on one side. If there's something out there, if it does make sounds, we'll find it. One of the challenges in searching this lake is its sheer size. The lake is about 120 miles long. And at its widest, which is off of Burlington, I believe it's something like 20 miles in width. Patricia Manley is a marine geologist. Her husband, Tom, is an oceanographer. They both teach at Middlebury College in Vermont. Lake Champlain was actually formed by a unique set of circumstances that involved glacial activity. About 10,000 years ago, retreating glaciers helped sweep the Atlantic Ocean right into Lake Champlain, and all kinds of sea creatures came with it. We actually had whales coming in from the Atlantic Ocean, and we have a lot of their fossils. In 1849, workers on a lakeside railroad line made a surprising discovery. They, we uncovered some bones, contacted the local naturalist, said, what have we got here? There was a fossilized whale from the period of time when the lake was part of the ocean. Marsden and the Manleys are skeptical that anything related to that period could still exist here. I can't say that I've ever seen anything that looks in any way, shape, or form to some kind of prehistoric monster. Bocast hopes that what he hears today might help solve the mystery of what could be lurking in Lake Champlain. We're in about, uh, right now, in about 15 feet of water. Is that a good depth to be, to be doing this? That should be fine. OK. With the echolocation recorders, this team can track animals in any direction. So we're recording everything right now off the active microphone onto this recorder. Anything, Chris? I heard an interesting click. A storm front appears on the horizon of Lake Champlain. As Bocas continues trying to track a bizarre sound coming from something in the water. And now Bristow wants a closer look. Okay, yep, go ahead. Just let Tether out as I go, Bob. All right, here we are on the bottom. We're down about 23 feet. It's hard to say just what Bocast heard. Yeah, I just turned it off. As they continue scanning the waters for the source behind the strange sound, the massive storm quickly begins closing in on them. 
This isn't a drill. We got to go in now. I think we better secure everything on board. And I want to get in before we get into that light. While Bocast cuts his search of Lake Champlain short, LeBlond and his team in Canada change tactics. And we're at the surface. So far, the crew has struck out in searching for the creature at the bottom of the water, so they shift their focus to the surface. It's calm at the surface. Still no action? Nothing yet. Okay, we're so, going to try going to the bottom. Go back to the bottom. Um, See what's happening down there. We can have a good look at what's happening, but nothing is really happening yet. Nothing. No, nothing. LeBlond is unable to find any signs of the creature. If you never look, you'll never find anything. We plumbed the depths. We uh, had a look at the bottom of uh, the inlet, and I don't think we could have spent any longer in one day. It's not the, the, the capture, it's the hunt that's interesting. If it's there, we'll find it eventually. LeBlond and his team in Canada call it a day and head for land. But in Lake Champlain, Bocast and Bristow have more work to do. They have found shelter from the storm that cut their audio expedition short. Bocast analyzes the audio files he captured, hoping to find a recording of something that might match the claimed sightings. I've got a couple, looks like rapping sounds or something like that. Let's zoom in on that. Looks like we have some intensity here. And when you say intensity, you think might be a uh, fish species? These are not echolocation sounds. With the sounds I picked up today, I don't know that I got very much in terms of bioacoustic signal, to be yeah, honest. So it's going to be tough. Yeah. yeah. The weather definitely impacted our chances on recording interesting sound because the more audio you get, the more chance you have of getting some kind of good results. All Bocas picked up were man-made sounds. And no trace of the creature that people say they've seen here. Scientists say there's a more logical explanation for what people are witnessing. Some believe that the creature in Lake Champlain is really a giant sturgeon. Sturgeon are living fossils and proven survivors. They've prowled the seas for 135 million years, ever since the reign of the dinosaurs. People who see sturgeon spawning for the first time are usually quite surprised at the kind of things that they can do to the surface. It's not something that you would see usually. Most of the time you don't see them. They're, they're underwater, they're 10, 20, 30 feet down. It's the unexpected. When they do surface, these prehistoric looking creatures have large snouts and scaly skin which is why they could be mistaken for mysterious sea creatures. Lake sturgeon, normally they grow to about six feet, but one of the attributes of fish is fish don't stop growing. They continue to grow throughout their lives. Atlantic sturgeon can reach 12, 15 feet. That's huge, and it's a biggest species in the lake. The biggest species of sturgeon can weigh more than 1,000 kilograms. That's a monster, just by definition. A monster is something big, scary, that you can't explain in your normal context of life. You've got a monster with a sturgeon, absolutely.
I think the creature was definitely not a fish. Definitely not a snake and definitely not a mammal. But I know there's been sightings of, of something out there beyond a fish, beyond uh, the sturgeon. That is a mystery. And still others believe that a completely new species may be what people are seeing. So the ocean remained mysterious because they're difficult to get to and they're very large, they're very deep and they're very inhospitable and they're full of strange creatures. People continue to discover new animals in the ocean, especially at great depths. All kinds of weird creatures with all kinds of legs and eyes and appendages that we don't understand. While searches have come up empty in Lake Champlain in Western Canada, on Loch Ness, Takala thinks his cameras have picked up on something. Something he claims supports another hypothesis. What I'm looking at here is a strange uh, dark region in the waves where the camera, our camera has actually zoomed onto the loch, the surface of the loch. You can see other gray and dark areas. This is particularly dark and forms a distinct shape, so we traced it and it, to us anyway, looks like it could be a plesiosaur, a creature from the dinosaur period swimming in Loch Ness. It's been 65 million years since plesiosaurs ruled the waterways. But some say this creature still lives in Loch Ness. Landscaper Richard Preston knows he saw something out there. And Takala has studied his photos closely, searching for evidence that it could be a plesiosaur. I think that the reason that people look into Loch Ness or Lake Champlain and see a plesiosaur is that they see a monster. Dr. Robin O'Keefe is a paleontologist who specializes in marine reptiles. Plesiosaurs are unique. They're a group of animals that don't look like any other animal. The plesiosaur is, is an interesting and I think kind of sexy animal with this long neck and this small head and this humpy back. They all had four flippers that they used to fly around with underwater. The best analogs that we have alive today are things like sea lions or even penguins. Plesiosaurs are relatively large animals. Uh, they varied in size from under two meters to up to 12 to 15 meters. But there's a problem with the theory that the Loch Ness Monster is a plesiosaur. We have good evidence that this big asteroid or comet hit the Earth about 65.5 million years ago. And that caused the death of the dinosaurs and also the death of plesiosaurs. Is there any evidence that plesiosaurs could have evolved until now, until recent times? I have never seen any evidence, personally. Off the coast of South Africa, a group of fishermen found this fish, the coelacanth, in the 1930s. A species thought to have vanished 80 million years ago. This was one of those so-called living fossils. It's a very large fish. It occurs in very deep waters. We still have so much to learn about our planet and the species that occur there in these mysterious environments. As far as evolution, who knows what a dinosaur would look like after millions and millions of years, how it would adapt to its environment, how it would change uh, physically and everything else. When people report things, they describe things that are reptilian and mammalian. 
O'Keefe doesn't see any evidence that science is wrong this time. Plesiosaurs breed there. We know that because they were reptiles. So they're going to have to surface to breathe. And if they're going to surface, then they're going to be in places where people can see them. They're also relatively large animals. And as large animals, uh, they're going to be difficult to hide. Scientists say there's little chance that a dinosaur could survive in secret with no carcass ever found. As a paleontologist, I would be happier than anyone if we could find a plesiosaur uh, living in the oceans or in Loch Ness or anywhere. Uh, up till now, I've seen no evidence. All of us who have, uh, who have observed the animal and, and understand that it is there would like answers to a lot of questions. But I think the persistence of the sightings confirms that there's something out there that people are seeing. I mean, people are just not making this stuff up. I'm quite confident that I'm not exaggerating what I saw. There's definitely something unknown in the lake because there's so many sightings of something. Scientists believe there are most likely logical reasons for the sightings. Well, there's both uh, aspects of marine Animals like some very large uh, fish. There's one fish that looks like a giant eel uh, that can reach almost up to 30 feet. Likewise, the, the basking shark, when, which are very large. It has a, a mouth that uh, opens to about a meter or so. So these are out there all the time, and some of them have peculiar shapes. And so if one of these is floating and bobbing up in the waves, it can look like a, a peculiar creature. Researchers learn more about our oceans every day. And despite evidence against creatures like the Loch Ness Monster, Walton and others like him say they'll keep looking. I still think that we know more about the surface of the moon than we do of our own oceans, and that's something that should change in the future. I've always said that I would keep looking until there's no more breath left in me. It's incredibly hard to prove that the monster exists, so we keep looking, and one day we will find it. I took a picture, I saw what I saw, and people can make their mind up from that. We still want something beyond us, dragons, something bigger than us, something more, something we cannot fully understand. There are lots of theories about what could be out there, but still no definitive answer. What's quite mysterious about this animal is that it doesn't look like anything else that we know. It doesn't look like a whale. It does not look like sea lions. It doesn't look like an elephant seal. None of the above. Whenever I'm on the ocean, I look out and I perhaps one day I'll be lucky and see it. Investigators around the world have searched for the truth behind strange reports of aquatic beasts. Researchers, eyewitnesses, and scientists alike have considered many possible explanations for these mythical creatures. There's very few facts and much speculation in this business. And, and so, we don't know, really. Despite logical scientific explanations, People will continue to be captivated by tales of fantastical monsters in our seas, and the legends will live on. There will always be things on Loch Ness that people do not understand. And in a place like this, with the reputation that it has, they will be interpreted as possible Loch Ness monsters. The legend will continue, I am sure, for quite a long time. And if one day uh, I prove to be entirely wrong, I'll be delighted. We need to find a much more realistic, tangible animal out there, either through video or observation, or better still by capture or finding one recently dead on, on a beach. Until we do that, I think the jury is well and truly out. Not a wave, a wake, or anything, just still.
but it just disappeared. Researcher Miko Takala believes Preston might have captured a rare picture of the elusive creature. This is a promising sighting. The interesting thing about these photos is it looks fairly large. I would have to estimate it at 15 to 25 meters long. You have three or four humps in the water. It's one of the most fascinating pictures of the Loch Ness Monster that I've ever seen. But skeptics explain sightings and photos like these as hoaxes, mirages, or misidentifications. Water is mysterious. It can be a mirror, too. A mirror to our own imagination. Adrian Schein has been investigating Loch Ness since the 1970s and hasn't seen pictures or anything else that he thinks proves the beast exists. Photographs can be of known animals, misinterpreted. They can be hoaxes, simple mistakes. They can be all sorts of things. Schein has analyzed dozens of pictures like Richard Preston's. In the case of uh, Richard's photo, You've got an honest man taking a picture in good light conditions of something that we're quite definitely convinced was there. So then you have the photo. What is in the photo? By looking at the shadows, you can see where the sun was. We've concluded that the Richard Preston pictures are reflections of the sun on the water caused by house windows and therefore do not represent evidence for the Loch Ness Monster. Shine says a trick of light, not doctoring, created an illusion in these photos. Over the years, some people have tried to fake pictures of the legendary monster. The camera lies much more often than the witnesses. The classic pictures have got nothing to do with Loch Ness Monsters. The most famous photo of the Loch Ness Monster is known as the Surgeon's Photo. And it is the one image out of all the images which is probably in the backs of the minds of almost all the inhabitants of the Western world when they think of the Loch Ness Monster. But 60 years later, there was a surprising twist an admission of an elaborate hoax. The hoaxer claimed the famous picture is really a model of the monster attached to a toy submarine. Back on Vancouver Island, former oceanography professor Dr. Paul LeBlond and illustrator Jason Walton are poring over witness reports of sea creatures. This 2009 video shot off the coast of Alaska has them buzzing. This is taken by Kelly Nash from his fishing boat. There's a sandbar at the, uh, just at the back there. And the fishing boat's over here. The head occasionally comes up. At one point, there's a jet of water that comes up in the air. It blows. Pretty amazing. This is the only example that we have, I think, of one of these animals blowing from the back of its head, apparently. Right. The blurry video makes it hard to tell exactly what this is. Walton has also created sketches based on descriptions from witnesses who report seeing a sea monster. There's the head, there's the tail, it has serrations at the top there. The witness descriptions have been so regular and they match each other so well, I really do think that there's a large mystery in our oceans. Eyewitness testimony in a court of law would hold a great deal of weight. But science is not the law. People's impressions of what they see might be influenced by their expectations, by one's memory, by one's desire to make a story that you can rationalize. No one knows for sure how many claims of sea monster sightings there have been. But in Lake Champlain alone, 
More than 300 eyewitnesses have reported seeing an unexplainable creature roaming the waters. Many people see a strange animal which is either a whale nor a familiar other marine animal. It uh, typically has a long neck, a horse-like head, it's 20 to 40 feet long. Over the past 16 years, biologist Dr. Ellen Marr was over. There's another place in North America where the legend of a sea monster has also taken hold. The inlets of Vancouver Island, Canada, sit at a similar latitude as Lake Champlain. But unlike Lake Champlain, there's a wide open path here to the vast ocean. In the late 1990s, Robert Iverson stepped out of his house on Vancouver Island. Well, I was sitting in the chair there, look, just looking out into the water. And I saw this three humps come up. Didn't see a head, didn't see a tail, just saw these humps. And it was the size and the speed that really made me sit up and take notice. And I just leaped up out of the chair to sort of try and get a better look at it, but then it was gone. And then I'm looking and looking and looking, and then I see it again. And that's when I was convinced I had actually seen something. It was big. After it disappeared the second time, I, well, I just sat down there and just kept looking. It was startling how big it was. Because, you know, sitting there, you see seals go by all the time and whales. And this was bigger than any of those things. You see strange things out in the water, but nothing like that. Whatever I'm looking out there, I'm looking for. I have never seen anything like it since or before. But back at Loch Ness in Scotland, Richard Preston has more than just his word for what he saw. I took pictures on my phone because I couldn't believe what I was seeing, really. I looked to see if any colleagues were around so they could look at what I saw, and um, nobody about. And I turned back round to the lock. There was nothing. I saw something out of the corner of my eye glinting. You see things all the time. But you dismiss them because they're just normal. And this was something different. And I proceeded to go from the terrace down to the lock for a closer view. I was shocked. It was shining as if it was wet. So it had three humps. And it was just shimmering in the sunlight and it looked 3D. It just stood out like nothing else I've ever seen before. Not really understanding what it was that I was seeing. The story of the Loch Ness Monster isn't just a strange Scottish legend. Similar tales in faraway seas make this a global phenomenon. People insist they've seen cryptic creatures making unexpected appearances in photos and video. Oh, look at this! Over here, this oh, And rising from the waters.
some of these reported sightings come from the northeastern United States at Lake Champlain. Growing up here, Bill Villadoux thought he knew Lake Champlain inside out until he saw something strange. Well, it was a summer day and the lake was glass smooth. And we decided it was so nice that we would travel down the uh, west side of the lake. My brother-in-law saw the animal first. He shut the boat down. And we came up alongside of it uh, to a distance of about five feet. I saw a torso, which was approximately the size of a pony. And I could see, a, a, not a hump, but a back ridge that was a dark color. The texture was very clear. It, it, it had no scales, did not have fur. It was like eel skin. There was no splash, no fuss. It just simply kind of went down like a submarine would dive. Then the experience. I remember the hairs going up on the back of my neck. It was something that I had never seen before. They come out of the water when you least expect them. I just saw three humps come up. It was startling how big it was. Sightings of strange underwater monsters are being reported all over the world. I saw a torso the size of a pony. There's something out there that people are seeing. Unknown aquatic species, a remnant from the dinosaurs, or just a myth. They can be hoaxes, simple mistakes. They can be all sorts of things. Loch Ness is enormous. It's a fantastic body of water. Since the 6th century, there have been reports that a monster lurks in the loch. A good part of the evidence for the existence of a creature in this water is witness testimony. Miko Takala thinks he spotted the beast while walking the Loch Ness shoreline in 2003. I was near the water's edge, saw the creature. It was a kind of very dark brownish color, a sort of scaly color, much like a sort of snake-like texture. It wasn't just sitting there, it, it was actually swimming against the current. And I remember the hairs going up on the back of my neck because it was so vividly something that I had never seen before. Takala isn't the only one who insists he's laid eyes on the creature here. I remember that day, that it was a very sunny day. They were really still. In 2010, Richard Preston was hired to redesign the landscape of a castle that sits on Loch Ness. The first things we were doing that day is checking out around the castle to see what, what jobs needed doing. And I went for a quick visual inspection around the terrace of the castle. The terrace looks over the loch. 